Hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that quick demonstration on how to light a fire using flint and steel. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the details of how that whole process works, okay? Oh. The reason why flint and steel is our preferred method of fire ignition is because it's the only other method other than friction fire that we know of to light fire indefinitely in the wilderness. It has been a very um, efficient way to light fire for millennia. Um, its uses have been dated back all the way to Mesopotamian times and utilized by many native and aboriginal people throughout history. And yes, there are other more efficient ways of lighting fire in a suburban setting like a lighter or a fire from the stove or matches and things like that. But I'm talking about strictly in a wilderness context, okay? Um, things like your lighter, your matches, or a ferrocerium rod or magnesium strikers, those all work really, really well and are good methods. But the problem with them is that they run out very, very fast. Okay, I've had a lot of experience with ferrocerium rods and they wear down super fast and when you wear that middle down they tend to break and there goes your ferrocerium rod, even the ones that claim to have 10,000 strikes. So anyway, let's get into the four components that you need um, in order to uh, use your flint and steel. Okay guys, these are the four components that make up your flint and steel kit. We have our tin which you will utilize to make your charred material. Um, in this case, we have this charred cloth that we made out of jeans. Anything that's 100% cotton works really well. Bandanas, jeans, shirts, um, any, anything of that sort. And also you can utilize uh, punk wood, which is just a spongy, kind of decayed wood that you can find out in the field. Um, the best um, kind that I've utilized is the kind that comes from oak. All right, so that's what the tin is for. And if you want to learn about that method, go look at our um, 
how to make charcoal video that we did earlier uh, a couple of weeks ago and also so you can find out the giveaway that we have the details are in that video okay so now for the rocks these are the rocks that you're going to be utilizing to strike uh, your striker against and what you're looking for is anything um, in the rock hardness in the moss hardness scale of a 7 or above so quartz like what we have here and agate which is what we have here are both uh, 7 or harder in the moss um, hardness scale and the way you can tell is by looking at for a smooth sharp um, surface with sort of a glassified look you don't want to see very much grain as you can see in the quartz you can almost look through it sometimes it's kind of transparent um, so that's what you want, anything that's 7 or above in the moss hardness scale. And then we have a, our striker. This striker is made of carbon steel. We use recycled spring steel because all spring steel is um, carbon steel. So what you're doing is you're actually going to strike your stone or your rock with the carbon steel striker. And what that's going to do see if I can get that to focus better there there you go what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause the rock to actually strike a little piece a microscopic piece of this uh, carbon steel from the striker and what happens is iron the irons in the carbon steel are pyrophoric what that means is that when the iron particles are released into oxygen they want to oxidize or um, rust really really fast and that causes them to uh, spontaneously combust and that is how we get our spark so it's a really cool concept okay so let's demonstrate it again so that you can see how it's done okay guys so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our charred material and we're gonna grab it and put it right on the sharp edge of the rock that we're gonna strike with all right okay so what you do is once it's laid on there you're going to grab the striker and you want this striking edge, this is the business end right here, okay? You want to point the sharp edge of that rock upward a little bit, slightly, and you want the cloth, to, you want to try and catch a spark with that piece of cloth, alright? So here you're going to see this demonstration. It might take a couple of times. Um, the trick to getting sparks is to hit the least amount of rock with the most amount of force, okay? So you don't want this striking edge to be rubbing up against the whole surface of this rock like that. What you want is you want a uh, fast, deliberate blow one time and you want to hit the least amount of rock possible with the most amount of force. That statement right there changed the game for me and, and when I understood that, I started making sparks like fireworks, okay? Trying to do that is actually going to cost you to miss a lot of times. I still miss because you're trying to be finesse it and you're trying to hit a very slight small amount of rock. But if you do that, eventually you'll get good and you'll find the sweet spot and you'll be getting sparks every single time. So let's check it out here. Let's see how well I do. There it is. You see how that caught? There it is. So as you can see our ember is growing. So we let it grow just a tiny bit. And then, I have my tinder bundle ready here. And I introduce this into my tinder bundle, okay? Well, what you wanna use for your tinder bundle is really fine, small, dry, really dry materials, okay? In another video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to find dry materials even in wet conditions, so. I'm actually going to light this inside of my fireplace because I don't want um, to fill my house with smoke. So now I have this in here, as you can see, and I'm letting my ember grow, and we're letting that heat burn out all the oxygen inside. And I've tacoed or wrapped my tinder bundle around the ember just enough so that the heat is in close contact with all those small fibers but not enough to choke out the fire. We need oxygen to go in there still too. So I'm gonna blow a little bit, slightly. All 
as you can see a lot of more smoke starting to form there what you want to do is you want to hold your tinder bundle over your head and face so that the smoke isn't blowing in your um, face while you're trying to blow this to flame and when you breathe in between strokes you want to turn over to the side so you don't inhale smoke easy long breaths and there you have it and once it comes to flame don't panic let it grow and slowly set it down under your uh, materials that you're gonna burn okay guys so there you have it um, one of the things I forgot to mention is the material that I utilized for my tinder bundle that material is actually one of my favorite materials I utilized uh, pine needles that I found along the road or uh, along a trail that have been walked on or ran over many 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 times and what that does is it causes the little pine needles to break into even smaller fibers that makes awesome tinder material for your tinder bundle okay and we called that roadkill and it's a shout out to my friend Alyssa who actually um, came up with that name or introduced that name to me at least anyway guys in conclusion I really really recommend that you make um, flint and steel an integral part of your grab-and-go kit or your survival kit as you noticed in the video and in the earlier presentation that Rachel did for you guys um, it takes a lot less effort than utilizing something like friction fire if you didn't catch the video of um, us making charcoal or how to make charcoal go ahead and watch it again I'm gonna put a link in the description down here um, we're giving away three flint and steel sets and some more knives um, but you have to go and watch that video so you can find out what the details are in order to enter the giveaway. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and be blessed. And there you have it. <laughs> it almost burnt my hand!